everyone, welcome to Third Coast Gaming Impressions. Um, we are recording this on May 19th, 2021. It is Wednesday, my dude. I'm probably going to put this up on Friday for y'all. I'm joined by my co-host Austin Taylor. Hello. Hi, you are indeed. Hey, uh, we, we're we here. There, we, We've played some video games. It's been two weeks since we uh, we talked about the video games. It's been a bit since we've talked about the video games. Yeah, I uh, I wanted to start with this, uh, you know, bunch of big releases coming out two or three weeks ago. Quite a few. You know, sequel to a franchise, Resident Evil 8, everyone loves. But I was like, what if I bought Near Replicant for $60? And so I did. Yeah. And so I did. I mean, I have nothing against Resident Evil 8, but I think you made the correct choice. I think uh, this game's longer than oh, Resident yeah. Evil 8. That was in my weighing these two games. Like, I was like, Resident Evil 8's probably 11 hours. I've I've played, like, 13 hours of this game so far, and I've been doing lots of side quests. All right. Yep. Near Replicant. It was a game called Near that came out in 2010, 2011 for PS3. Specifically, uh, near Gestalt. Yes, is what near, we got here in the states. Yeah, that's that's what they called the Japanese version. Yeah, it was 2010. Yeah. Uh, in this, in the old version, just gonna run through the rigmarole. You're the dad. In this re-released version, for newer consoles, near replicant, which yeah, only is. Japan got. You play yeah. as the son. You play as a brother of this girl you're trying to, who's sick of Yona is her name um this is a sequel to dragon a ending five of Dra- one of the dragon games but uh near's cool man i i bought this game like a couple like a i probably bought this in like 2011 originally and I thought I played 10 hours of this game and then I got up to the point that I played and I only played like four hours of this. And I don't do this frame rate in that original game is kind of choppy. Like oh, it's the original game is not like well made. Like it, it doesn't, they did not it doesn't have run as well. And I don't think I had the patience for it. Like it's definitely like so far from the stuff I played of the original in this, they're the same game. Except Replicant runs at 60, yep. and the combat's just a little tighter, and those two things have made me, like, binge play this game. Oh, yeah, like, near, like, near Replicant, like, with the added subtitle of, like, version 1.5, like, in a, just a s- string of numbers, um, is, like, is the product that you get because near uh, Automata was popular surprisingly popular yeah and uh i barely played uh automata so i am also excited to go back to near automata after i finish this i think yes so the uh, the number the 1.247487 that is the subtitles of this. <clears throat> it's the square root of 1.5. Yeah. Which is their funny joke. There's also this weird thing that I've realized that is also going on in this. That the thing about Near Automata and Near is they will go into multiple endings to recontextualize their games and that is also the circle that i am in is that i played yeah. near for five hours didn't p- enjoy it but never sold it back to gamestop played automata it got really popular it got really good critical reception now i'm back to the original near playing it over again life's a circle austin it's truly just the timeline no one could account for um yeah yeah in this like in this version they've introduced my understanding so they've introduced a new ending oh yeah yeah there's a new ending i'm i'm not that far in this game there's like a there's like a there's your original playthrough and then there's like 
uh, A, B, C, D, and the new ending is like an E ending. Yeah, yeah, they're and, all like numbered, lettered. So in the original, in the normal playthrough, the first one, which I, w- I guess I wouldn't call normal, but like there's a break that happens where you get, there's like a time jump. I'm not even there yet. Dude, there, these side quests, Austin, these fucking side quests. Let me tell you. Okay, so there's main quests in near where you fight enemies and do cool stuff. It wouldn't, it's not cool stuff, but you're fighting people and you're running around. And then there's the side quests. There's two types of side quests in this game, Austin. There's the side quest where I run to another village and come back. Because there's like the hub area, which is like your town. And then there's like a bunch of cities that you have to go through, like the plains to get to. Or like the desert to get through. Or like the coastline to get through. So the side quests are either run to this other place and talk to someone or fetch quest. There's so many fetch quests, Austin. Oh my god. And I've, I'm doing all of them for some reason. I don't know why. But, yeah. uh... Because you have, like, this inventory system that's, like... You're collecting... Like, roots and medicinal herbs. And there's, like, a whole system of growing crops. That most merchants will just sell you instead. Because you're getting enough money from these side quests to just buy your side quests that are like i had one where it's like go get a watermelon for this person there's another one go get 10 wool and 10 like apples for this person so i just go fucking buy them instead of growing them or whatever but the main story of this game (laughs) the main story besides like this stuff is that you're a brother and a sister and the sister's sick she has, like, this ailment where, like, there's, like, scroll, like, sc- a scroll of, like, letters, black letters and words going up her arm, which this game points out to be, like, words are very important in this uh, universe. Like, you yeah. upgrade your weapons and your magic with different words that you're collecting that will, like give you more magic damage or have give you more health or have your weapons do more damage and as you upgrade your weapons like they're you're adding to like every weapon has a story too yes and like as you're upgrading your weapons you add to that story yes and so in the beginning of the game you're kind of trying to help yona with some stuff which is your sister and so like you're first quest that you like leave the hub area is you're going to this castle where yona ran off to and that's where you find yona sleeping and there's like these two demons and there's a book that's sealing her off with a kind of like a magic like wall so you attack the book a little bit and then the book like wakes up and talks to you and joins you for some reason. And that is Weiss, which is this talking book that you eventually figure out is like a key to saving humanity against this like dark force. So that's where like the words come in is that Weiss or Grandmaster Weiss, but everyone just calls him Weiss and he's really angry about it because he wants his proper um, title. Yeah, he, wants, he wants his honorifics. Yeah, yeah. Weiss is kind of an asshole, but that's like, he's kind of charming at the same time with that. Uh, I was originally going to play this in Japanese, but I think the English voice acting is so good. Oh, yeah. Like, that the, I kind of stuck around with it. Like, the Weiss English is performances very good. are like great. Like, Liam O'Brien as Weiss is like really funny. Laura Bailey as uh, Kanye is, is great. Oh, spe- speaking of Kaine, fucking, uh, you pick her up, she's one of your party members, and she's just in lingerie for some reason. I haven't gotten to the story reason why. I don't know if there will be one. I remember that was there one is. of the off-putting things. <laughs> when I played this in 2010, I was like, why does this character look like this? I don't I don't know if I should play this. Yeah, But I, mean, uh, I, I get to... through it. You get through it. Yeah, the thing to note is, like, uh, Kaine does have, like, a narrative reason. For like that attire and like her general like why people just don't like her really, uh. But like it should like, it should be noted that this is still like something that was developed by a dude, right? 
Yeah, like the same. They give a reason why, like, uh, 2B looks like that in Nier Automata, the main character of that game, because she's also in, like, a maid's outfit. And none of those reasons. Like none of those reasons justify the fact that yeah. they're dressing this character up, which is one of the reasons I stepped away from Automata is because I was like, because you can constantly get like looking up her skirt and I was like, this is weird. I'm just not. But I think as I'm beginning pulled into this more, I'm like, I'll just like work through it because like the work itself is like so much greater than that one like perversion that like I'm cool with it. It sucks, but I think about it. So, the Kaine's character herself is she is, like, they haven't gotten too much to what happened, but she's enhanced in a certain way, and they kind of call her a monster. So, there's this thing that, like, a, it's like a trope with a lot of movies where, like, humans are the real monsters, where these people call her a monster, But they're kind of the monsters for calling her that. And they shun her from this one city you go to. And they don't like her. Like she's storied throughout this city. And they just do not like her at all. Yeah. But um. The. the, One of the main things that keep me in this game is the music. Like it is especially. Relaxing. And like just very of this like fantasy setting if uh, if i were to tell people to look up music from this there's like a hills music let me find the theme song Uh, but it's very like it's like very flutes heavy yeah. yeah, it's called it should... Hills of Radiant Wings. That's what it's called. Yeah. yeah, it should be noted that this like the soundtrack was reworked for this release. Yeah, yeah. Um, I looked at the original soundtrack. It it sounds similar, and in... yeah, it was reworked, but it's basically the same stuff. Because I remember this song very specifically when I played. Yeah. Gestalt like you... originally. Yeah, like you hit the same like music that you do have like I think edits that range from minor to like pretty significant. Like if you look at the track, um, like "God's Bound by Rules," like which is a track from Gestalt that I really enjoy. Like I can't say I'm particularly impressed by the changes made to it. Yeah, I haven't heard the changes to it yet, but I'll I'll take a look at it. Did you play this originally, or did you find the soundtrack? Later oh on. no yeah no i like my first thing with Nier was uh automata because a friend bought it for me um because he had bought four coffees accidentally wow air quote accidentally um and he gave me that's a story code. tell me the story Austin. how did that well like i don't i don't know i don't i don't remember how he wound up buying coffees accidentally i think it's like i think it what happened was um his his collector's edition of Automata was late, but he just really wanted to play it, so he ended up buying um looking for like trying to buy like a, a digital code from somewhere, like I think Amazon. Um No, he tried to buy a physical first and then he got digital, but like as he was buying the digital, his physical came in. And he's just like, Well now I just have this digital code. And I know this guy (laughs) who wants to get into this game, like, who wants to play this game because it looks interesting. Um, And then he just, like, messaged me the code on PS, and he's like, here you go. And there's some stuff in New Replicant that's, like, got updated and has it similar to Automata. Like, your super fast sprint from Automata is in this. Oh, yeah. And it makes the main character look very weird. Yeah, you're a lot faster. Yeah. In in this re release of Replicant than you were in that original. <clears throat> like, I would describe the. Because I went. I played the opening of this, and then I went and I popped in my PS3 version and played the opening. And the, the roll is like a hard roll in the original Nier compared to yeah. like Replicant, where you're kind of. It's like super fast and you go a little longer. And you have like a 180 spin you can do around an enemy. Like, if you're kind of fighting an enemy. And you click the dodge button, you'll swing behind their back, like 180 degrees. Yeah. 
And those improvements really have helped me stuck with it, especially the frame rate stuff. And like the environments look a lot better too, which is really cool. Um, the part I'm at right now, so spoilers, is <clears throat> the game wants me to do like a, um, a, uh, what, ah, oh shit, what are they called? It's like a text adventure. I was talking to this dude and I got cursed and the whole game turns into a text adventure for like half an hour, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> and I was like, this is. I, I had just woken up and I was like, this is too much for me to read. I'll come back later. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, I'm just chilling. Really. I really, the thing about this is I really enjoy open world JRPGs. Like I'm a big fan of, like I'll, I'll even throw, I'll throw kingdom hearts in here, but I really like like final fantasy 10 and final fantasy 12. I'm trying to think of the other JRPGs I kind of played around in like Final the Fantasy? PS3 area. <laughs> Nine. Final, Final Fantasy ones. 15. Yeah, the other ones I know about because I don't, I don't do JRPGs. Um, I would even throw some of Capcom stuff in, like even like, like weird, like Dead Rising is kind of this too. It's just like I love like Japanese like open world stuff because I think they do it so well. And, like, just make me want to be in these worlds longer. Yeah, like, I think there's... Like, the thing about Nier is, even, in like, in an Automata 2, is, like, there it is so, like, idiosyncratic enough to be charming. And, like, where they had to cut corners for things like budgeting, uh, like, they make compromises in these games that are, like... That feel like fundamental to the game's identity. Yeah. Outside of like just the fact that these are compromises uh, because they don't have money. Like the original version of this game is pretty ugly looking. Mm. And the frame. Well, okay. Like the PS3 version doesn't look particularly well when I booted it up. Like, like of looking at like other PS3 games of the era, it's just like. That and the frame rate. So there's like the compromises there. And yeah, like I people mean, had that of like, Automata where the open world looked like it was like a previous gen game, like graphics wise. Like there's stuff that looks very like, like the art is beautiful, but like the, the graphics aren't like up to it. Yeah, like rendering is something. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I look at like some of Gestalt on the 360, and like some of it still does look very striking. In a way that, yeah. like, I don't think this remake necessarily is, or, like, other games really are. Yeah. But, um, I'm really glad I bought this, and I'm having a good time. I was trying to think of what other PS3 Japanese stuff I was around. Like, Lost Planet. It's just, like, this PS3 era of, like, Japanese games are, like, what I'm really interested in. Like, PS3, 360, like, Blue Dragon is another really cool one from that time period. So, I'm having a good time. It's cool. That's my uh, near replicant moment. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about one of your things, or do you want to talk about Apex? Because we've been doing both. Um, we can do. I can do Metro. Oakley uh, Dokley. Yeah. So like this was, and this was a, a while back. Um, now at this point, yeah, a while back I started playing through. Uh, Metro Exodus, which is the third Metro game in the series by 4A Games, starting with like Metro 2033. Uh, this is based off of the uh, a novel series, which is a sort of in a you know in a setting of like the post-apocalyptic um, Russia nuclear like nuclear war happened, but like later, not during the Cold War. Uh, so like technology had advanced enough to where you could uh, the Russian government created an extensive metro system underground uh, that served as not only, you know, like a handy little thing to help people commute across its cities, but also uh, as bomb shelters. I have a question, Austin. What's This up? guy opens his graph. He's reviewing it. Metro Exodus is a thinking man's. No. Yes. True or false? No. 
Absolutely not. Like Metro, like in the sense that, like, it asks you to. Like, because once you, because the thing with Metro is like it starts out in Exodus specifically. It starts out in like the same like kind of linear fashion of Metro, right? Um, it introduces you to like a semi like open area, but then bad things happen. You know, your uh, elite sniper wife gets abducted. Uh, by road oh, no. Russian military, you have to go get her, and then like. You go, you fight, you mess up these Russian uh, military dudes real bad, but then you have to leave Moscow, and so you and the rest of your like group, being just a, just a band of dudes, just like lads, and also your wife's father, um, get on a train and leave Moscow. So yeah, wasn't get... isn't the basis for the open world of this game is you're taking a train to each yeah. like open area and stuff? Yeah, like you're take you're you are on this trek across uh, Russia essentially uh seeking like the remnants of the russian military and also perhaps an area of russia where you could you and your group of people could just move and live um one that isn't so like just heavily uh scarred by radiation um and like once you get into the open world it asks you to start considering things like weapon degradation uh Re, like and resource management involving explosives and ammo for your air pump gun that you have. Oh yes, famed air pump gun. I remember that thing. Yeah, and it's a really it's a really good implement uh, for that game as like a specifically as a stealth weapon, which is what you want in this game because uh, they, this is like you know this comes out in. The, I think like 2015, 2016. Um, and the thing about this game is it has this karma system, real popular with the kids those days, where if you are a just a murderer, if you just see, see folk and you start shooting folk, you're going to get the bad ending of the game. So oh, the lo- game I love does. Bad endings. So the game does like push you in this way of being like you're stealthy, non-lethal, because you can just walk up to a person and just punch them and knock them out instead of you know uh, blowing their brains out with your wide arsenal of guns. But once you get into these like semi-open world areas, it becomes a really interesting game. The problem is, is the story is just not very good. You're playing this. Uh... Mouse and keyboard or controller? Oh, controller. Controller, yeah. You're not a masochist. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, no. Like, part of this, part of the thing this game does is it has you use vehicles, and those controls oh. are not particularly good huh. on mouse and keyboard. Because, like, every every open world area, like every area you get to, that is this like air like open world, and you can tell because it starts off and it's just like, here's the land. Now go do stuff, as opposed to the areas that are like the more linear story focused areas. You're going to be asked to maneuver in vehicles. The first one's a boat. The second one's a van. Uh, and I just did not find the keyboard controls for it particularly good. And also, everyone like moves slowly enough in this game to where like you can just you're a marksman no matter what, really. So so uh, the controller works fine. As yeah. far as I'm concerned, uh, and it's like again, like the open world is is cool. Like you'll go to an area, you'll get like your introductory quest, which is going to give you like all your sort of side missions. Like you'll be standing with like one of your pals, and they'll be like, "Oh, hey, like I noticed this over here and this over here. You might want to check this out over there." Sort of thing, and then you have all your side missions and the main quest. Thankfully, we'll wait for you, even though it there was a point in time where I was like, is this timed? Because it felt like they were really pushing, like, you got to get through here quickly for certain areas. But thankfully, the game will just let you muck about for a bit. And that's how you find, like, the cool stuff, right? Like, weapon attachments, because you have modular weapons in this game that you can freely customize on the go. And, like, that stuff, that's very helpful. Uh, and that is your reward for exploring the world. It's like finding like a good sniper, like rifling for your, uh, for your assault rifle. So you can basically turn your assault rifle into a automatic sniper. 
Ooh. Yeah, which is really helpful in like specifically in like the second open world area where it kind of removes the karma system because it's just like this world, this area is going to be so hostile to you anyway. So yeah, kill it. your kill at your own discretion. As long as you're avoiding the uh, slaves that exist in the area, because this is also a game that's like, yeah, it's the post apocalypse. So we're going to have slavers and it's, Ooh, it gets rough. Yeah. It's a thing. Fallout kind of, dips their toes into as well yeah the thing is is like i think both these games handle it equally poorly i'll say like if you're not a fan of like the flavor of slavery that exists in fallout you're probably not gonna like how metro handles it yeah i they they seem like cool games i've always kind of wanted to get into them i just i don't think i ever got I would say many. like I would say like you can start with Exodus. Like the the thing about those first two games is they have this story about your main character Artyom and his connection, his sort of psychic connection to this uh, species called the Dark Ones, which is a creature created in the aftermath of nu- of the nuclear apocalypse. And up until like the end of exodus there's not even any sort of mention of the fact that rt kind of has psychic powers oh or like the ability to like receive visions i should say like there's not going to be a point exodus where rt is like throwing stuff with his mind um so like exodus kind of just abandons a lot of that so you could start with exodus and be fine I think, and I would recommend it because it's like the best those games play. Sounds like it'd be a good time. Speak, uh, you know what other games play very well, Austin? What what other games that include guns play very well? I like Apex Legends, Austin. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I haven't played too much of that. Um, They had that... This was like two weeks ago. This was like around like May 7th or something where I was just like... They had this Titanfall launch trailer where it was like one of the characters from Titanfall. His daughter is a playable character. Her name's Valkyrie and she flies around. And then they added a 3v3 mode. So I was like, hey, Austin, you want to you wanna dip your toes in this with me? And you were like, sure. Because we both have like a middling to like meh relationship with apex lately i would like bef- before this i guess yeah i don't know if you still feel the same way but i've been i've been playing a lot like we've been playing so okay so we both got back into it we were having our right time the 3v3 mode is okay it's hard we ended up getting back into the uh the regular oh, like we were doing duos yeah which was pretty cool um I like Apex more, as it turns out. Yeah, like I think because like I've been I've been playing more here on like a Discord server I'm in. Um, I think like arenas is a really good mode to get back into to like use to get back into Apex because it, it immediately puts you in this mode where you are like ready for combat because you know it's coming. Unlike in the battle royale where you know, you'll be, like, for maybe 10 to 15 minutes just walking around, looting as you try to stay inside the circle. And then suddenly you'll be attacked, and you might not be ready for it. Where Arena is, is very good at, like, teaching you to be ready for combat. Yeah. Um, like, like, I was doing a solo match... And we were looting in one of the new map areas where it has this giant crash ship. And we were kind of in the crash ship split up a little bit. And there's this team that just rolls up. All three of them are right by each other. They come in, they drop me, and then they drop, simultaneously drop my team as they find them because we're all spread out looting. So that'll happen sometimes too. But man, I... Ooh, I'm having a good time with Pathfinder, Austin. I was watching this streamer. His name's Daltush on Twitch. And he's a fucking murderer. I watched him. There were three squads 
fighting each other in this area and he just murders all of them <laughs> he he won a match solo and got like 15 12 to 15 kills by the end of it and i'm like this guy is a monster and i want to learn how to play like this so i've been messing around i could never i'm getting slightly better it's sometimes it's like the weapons too yeah some of these weapons are just inherently knock people way faster than the other ones do which yeah. I've been, like, having a good time experiencing, like, what stuff I should be picking up. Yeah, like, you... I think, mean, like, the go-to that you had for a while was, like, the uh, the Havoc, which is the energy assault rifle. So, like, if you can get a turbocharger in that thing, like, it's done. Yeah, you just melt people with that thing. Um, I have been getting better at the wingman which is their like revolver gun yeah that it has some kick but you can control it and i've been ranging people with it like i put a one-time scope on it but i'm sniping people with it and getting a couple shots off before we get to people which has been working out and um the eve 8 auto with like a nice bolt on it to make it shoot faster is you can kind of drop some people regularly before they because it you know most of these games are about who has the better time to kill and who is more accurate when you're fighting each other yeah so that kind of comes up and boy there's this other one called the flatline which is one that uses heavy ammo and it's just it's a little longer range than the regular carbine but it just it just goes it's steady and it doesn't have a lot of like damage fall off so I've been using the flatline a lot. I really like that. Yeah, especially if you can get like the sort of um, upgrade for that, where it when you go into single shot, you fire like two bullets at once, essentially. Like that makes the flatline yeah. like a really versatile weapon that I enjoy using. Yeah. Oh, this website has spray patterns for weapons. That's interesting. Um. Wow, uh, the Peacekeeper spray pattern is literally a star. I didn't know that. That's cool. Oh, yeah, because with the shotguns, they'll show you which shots land on people when you yeah. shoot them. And that, I think that's... It's very helpful. Yeah, and that works into, like, why people pick Pathfinder a little bit, because he's skinnier than the other models, and you're it's a little harder to shoot him sometimes. Like, I know yeah, I've had problems like shooting... Pathfinder's, like, a very tall, just, like, robot yeah yeah tall robot he has a grappling hook but yeah he's skinnier so his player model is a little smaller than the other ones i know like gibraltar is really fun because he throws a shield down and he has a shield like that when you aim down sights it'll come up yeah and like that's not like that shield itself is not like a huge thing but it can make the difference in like some like early game encounters yeah, yeah. And then this new character, Valkyrie, is really cool. She, um, I mean, you obviously know, but she has a jetpack, so she'll fly up, and you have, like, a limited amount of fuel that you're going through. And then she has a, her ability is she'll shoot rockets at people, and then her ultimate is she'll fly straight up in the air. And it's kind of like going up these zip lines they have on the map that go straight up. Yeah, it allows you, like, kind of jetpack off of onto yeah. the map so like, that's been really useful i keep going back and forth between i really like her because she's fun and whenever you jetpack get off your jetpack she'll throw up like a like a peace sign she has like a bunch of really cool emotes and stuff so i'm going back cool. and forth and being like man i want to get good at pathfinder's grappling hook but i also just want to play as valkyrie all the time yeah and like i can think of like when i was playing on my PC in the Discord server I'm in, I can think of at least like one example where we were, um, and this is in the Olympus map, which has this sort of large teleporter uh, ring around it, where my teammate and I were in an area where you couldn't actually go like, a, like we had to run around the teleporter, but we were so far away and the circle was coming in uh, that we, we died outside the circle. And like, we were one of the last like three squads so that was a real bummer and like if we had a valkyrie there we could have just gone over it and that would have been great yeah and it's it's really cool too that um 
whenever you're dropping in the beginning, she has like a pilot vision, which it kind of looks like an aircraft's like HUD, and she has a bunch of yeah, indicators sure. pinging other squads as you fall. <clears throat> And then that will show up too when I'm using my ultimate and we're drop redropping back down so I can see where the squads are. Yeah, so we can like land around them. <laughs> Cause we did this really stupid thing. It was just uh. the two of us. We were in a car, the little floating things they have. There's a squad that's shooting at us. We kind of get a little away from them, get out. We're like, we couldn't gauge these people, but instead I'm like, well, let's fly straight up and then fly straight back down and then we fight them and win. Because they're fighting another team, so we just run up and like go finish off whoever's there. Yeah, that was a great. Ex- that was a pretty good experience. There's it some only good once. moments. It only worked but... once. Yeah. There's this game has like really high highs, and then me getting used to just losing most yeah. matches, which you kind of get about, used to. Yeah, it's battle royales, you know, like. I don't love the genre because I, like, I was justifying my, or I was, um, I was kind of comparing this to, like, I was playing Battlefield 5 yesterday and the day before that as well. And just kind of, like, in Battlefield 5, I'm, I'm in this lobby for, like, 25 to 30 minutes and I'm just, we're just pushing back and forth on objectives and I can respawn and I can re-engage enemies who fought me. And this, when you die, you're just out. Yeah. This is a thing my friends have brought up. Like, you're playing this match, and then you die. So what's the point of, like, playing it if you're just going to die anyway? But I'm getting further past that where I feel like I'm getting better at shooting people. And I'm just... I love the encounters and the, like... I love the way this game feels, which goes back to, like, Titanfall 2. And I hope they put in, like, a... Even, like, a 4v4 team deathmatch, capture the flag, something would be cool for this game yeah like using using apex as like a platform to like host a number of really interesting multiplayer modes would be is like my my ideal sort of thing for this right and you get a little bit of that in arenas yeah like i i've dropped into some arenas and was having a good time but it's like i want more from apex and i know they're doing really well with the battle royale stuff but none of these Okay, the only one that did it was that Ubisoft free-to-play one. They Hyperscape. threw in, like, a team deathmatch mode, Hyperscape. But I don't think that caught on too much. I feel like if Apex would do that, they would have, a, like, another player base that would attach. Because you have the people who really like these Battle Royales. Then you have the people who bounced off the Battle Royale stuff. If, but also still play multiplayer games. Yeah. I feel like they could bring that audience back in. Like, we played that 3v3 stuff, and I, I just went and bought Valkyrie because I was like, oh, fuck it. I want to fly. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. I could see myself, like, getting more characters and being more into this if there was just, like... They have the two modes. They have the Battle Royale. They have the 3v3. Th- just throw me, like, some Team Deathmatch. Yeah. Be perfect. And there's probably, like, something to be said about the fundamental changes you would have to do to characters for like a team deathmatch, as well as like the resources. Yeah. Or like a, um, Needed. I'm sure they have a, a profit margin that they're looking at and that whenever it starts to go down is when they kind of, I'm guessing is when they put new content out to make that swing back up. Cause this is still a business, but it's a yeah. really, you know, it's a fun video game that a lot of people enjoy. And they hit their seasonal content in a very good stride, it's felt like. It's usually twice a year. It's been maybe a little more. But usually the big stuff. Like, they're at season 9 right now. Um, yeah, resources, like you are saying, yeah. I remember um, there's another Call of Duty Black Ops 4 had, like, their team deathmatch stuff with people with powers running around and stuff. But I think they only let them keep, like, one power that they could use. So I'm curious if they did do what they would end up doing, if they changed it a little bit for team deathmatch. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's our that's our apex moment of the, the podcast. You, you were there, Austin? Good game. Yeah, I'm here. 
Yeah. Okay. I I when I'm not playing this game, sometimes I'm just thinking about it. Like I'll I'll see like the shotgun hits when I'm yeah. shooting people, and like I'll just get the mm, maybe I should play more Apex. <laughs> Maybe I should I join y'all's Discord and we can try to improve that uh, spread. Okay, so you 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 do play on PC, right? Yeah. Apparently, PC and Xbox play well together. Like, the, apparently, the chat system is a lot better in that than with PlayStation. Yeah, well, yeah, so, the chat system can like reach across platforms. So we might be able to mess with that because my Series S runs Apex way better, and it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, we can mess with that. Like the whole reason I started doing PC was like. I'm a lower player level on PC, so I can rank up faster, and I can get the in-game currency that will allow me to eventually unlock new another character quicker than I can on my PS4. Yeah, and that's that's how it is on Series S. Like, I, I got a bunch of games where there are low-level people, and I'm getting a bunch of coins, and it's really cool. Hitting dopamines. Yeah. Um, is there any dopamines in uh, Horizon Zero Dawn? In Horizon that? Zero Dawn? Oh, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, um, Horizon Zero Dawn, the sort of open world post, post-apocalypse post adventure by Guerrilla Games, uh, sort of, I think, like, really their first kind of game that is not just, like, a shooter like Killzone. Um, yeah, I think, I think I spoke about this, like, once on the podcast before, but, like, I've gotten deeper into, like, Horizon's narrative, you know, sort of the whole, like, journey of um, Aloy, she's, like, you know, uh, survives a assassination attempt, doesn't understand why she was, uh, they, these people attempted to kill her. And like, you were discovering like, why did these people try to kill you? Who are you? Why do you look like this scientist who was alive a couple thousand years ago? That sort of thing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and like, yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn still is good. Like playing Horizon Zero Dawn is like, is still like really fun and like interesting in like it's sort of its take on like the monster hunter like like combat but like still like much more approachable even if like i think um too many of the encounters have you shifting through menus in a real way that it makes them kind of cumbersome because like you'll get into an encounter with a um with like a big fucking metal bird uh and you need to use like your heavier uh and unit like weapons and the weapons i'm using are things i got from the expansion because i'm doing new game plus now and like also on ultra hard and like we talked about the ultra hard difficulty a while ago and how like that might have been a mistake but as i've like gotten reacquainted with the weapons i got in the frozen wilds expansion i just i've realized that this is still pretty easy because i'm doing an insane amount of damage um but like yeah you'll get to like an encounter with like this really big like metal bird thing it's like okay i need to use these weapons i don't currently have them equipped because i have like my uh bomb thrower or something and i need to equip like my bigger bow and so like half of the encounters you you get in this game you'll be like pausing to go into menus because you can only have like four weapons on like your select wheel at any given point in time so you need to like switch those weapons out pretty constantly i found Especially on like ultra hard, when you want to do things like ensnare these uh, metal machines, these metal creatures. But second, that like I'm finding, I still like enjoy like the story. It kind of has like the same, like a similar problem. I didn't get into this with Metro, but like Metro is like my problems with Metro's story like do sort of revolve around like how like this game, like how that game writes like women and. I think you kind of like Horizon Zero Dawn almost like kind of falls into these same pitfalls, but it's almost always ha- like ends up having narratives about like women who are defying their like gender essentialist societies. It's kind of like the flavor, like the flavor of that story that Horizon Zero Dawn wants to do because it's everywhere. Like you will meet at least five different people like that who, like, you help in side quests, and, like, in pretty fun side quests. And so, like, that makes Horizon Zero Dawn, like, pretty enjoyable. Yeah, I remember starting this game up and trying to stream it, and then... I I don't think you've ever done that for, like, a Let's Play thing, but I I just fell off 
stuff like that never came back. I tried it with bug stacks too and just never came back. So you're, you're kind of talking about it. I might, I might go back. Man, if I get a PS5, that might be yeah. how I play this because I really... I'll, I'll create that before Forbidden yeah. West comes out, which is still a name. Um, still a name. Still a name. You fucking uh, it's coming. To, is it coming to PS4 too? I don't remember. Forbidden West? I think so. I think... Yeah. I think they said like it will be multi-platform in that way. Which is smart. It's a good business move. Yeah, I mean, they... They'd have to. I don't... I mean, that just depends on what we're going to see later. <laughs> because all we've seen from that game is like a teaser about even yeah. bad, badder stuff happening in the screens. But like, yeah, like, the thing about Horizon, I will say, is... Like, I can understand why you fall off because, like, a lot of its quest structures, like, aren't particularly interesting. You do have a lot of fetch quests. The only thing about that is, like, it is smart enough to be, like, if you already have these resources, Aloy will just give them the resources uh, before you even leave the conversation. Um, but the thing, the thing with it is how it rewards you a lot of the time is it gives you loot boxes. Uh, I love loot boxes. That have, like, yeah, just a random assortment of materials. And because of how annoyingly limited the inventory space in this game is because like you only have like at max you'll have like 120 inventory slots and this is for like crafting resources and materials of which you need a lot because you need to be able to constantly craft ammo and you also need to hold on to like special resources like machine hearts or lenses for their sort of ocular uh attachments so, that way you can so now you're those. telling me I shouldn't play this game, Austin. Well, I'm saying I understand why you can fall off. The thing about <laughs> this game is, like, the smartest thing Guerrilla Games did is that it's relatively small. Like, the world of this game is not is not particularly big. Like, with the added of the, like, Frozen Wilds expansion, it gets a bit bigger. But, like, that Frozen Wilds expansion is sealed off. Or, like, not necessarily sealed, sealed off, but, like kind of like cordon off to this one area that you don't have to interact with for most of the game so it's well that, that sounds pretty cool i i'm thinking about throwing this on the list i i got the list right now austin and it just says mass effect <laughs> and ratchet and clank when i buy ps5 but after that you know yeah. i got i got yeah. fuck with some horizon I think it's, yeah like horizon is a it is, like, a fun enough game. I think its narrative, like, it falls into some, into some imagery, we'll say, that I don't think, a, you know, the Dutch space studio that was made to, uh, that made this game is necessarily equipped to handle without oh, yeah, the, um, consultation. What I will call the indigenous population art style. Yeah, the sort the of... Post-post future indigenous... Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is a game that, it, like, opens in its like tutorial that you'll only see once opens with like your instructor, the man who takes Aloy in because she's shunned from, shunned from the society at birth, uh, telling you that you shouldn't waste any part of the machine. Right. Like oh, it trippy. plays in that kind of language yeah. and imagery. Like I think most of the intro, I think that this kind of imagery can be like degradating, but also empowering in a way. I think there's a line to straddle, but I think that, to certain people, it can come off as one thing, and to certain people, it can come off the other. I think I, I also fall in the middle, where I like what it's doing, but I also think it, it sounds like it, from what I played, I remember it playing in the tropes a lot of that kind of, like, you know, we saw, like, a lot of, like, Native American and indigenous population, like, movies from, like, the 50s to, like, the 80s and 90s and stuff, where you see that stuff coming like you know use every part of the animal that's like a that's like a movie meme you know so, well, that's <laughs> something meme. like that's something like within history classes like we specifically teach as we like the one difference between like how like a teacher will highlight like how uh native americans uh treated animals here as opposed to settlers as we like aggressively moved across america and pushed them from their homes and killed the wildlife they depended on in order murdering to murdering every buffalo you see. Yeah. So like, so like it trades in language and imagery that like it kind of does separate itself from like once you get out of the intro area a little bit. 
Like once you're in the like once you get to Meridian, I think it kind of leaves some of that stuff behind. But I don't know how successfully is because you know, like smarter people than me have discussed this aspect of this game, I'll say. Yeah, yeah. And I'm curious what people of those like lifestyles and of like Native American indigenous population culture I'm curious what a conversation from them would look like. Maybe like peering into someone else's life with that kind of thing. Because I know like Infamous Second Son does that a little bit. Like your character is like a Native American and he comes from like um, a part of Seattle where they have like a – trying to think what the word is. They have like a – it's like a really big – it's like a community center. It's kind of like their big den where they they all meet and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm trying the, to think of the word the, for it. The problem with Second Son is not necessarily its portrayal of indigenous people as much as it is, at least from my understanding, is not like that it portrays indigenous people in a really bad way. It is mostly that like this indigenous person is played by Troy Baker, who is a white person. Yeah, that's a weird thing too. Like he does a really good job voicing that character and doing that kind of attitude he has, but. Yeah, he's a white guy. But yeah. yeah, like I know that game does that a little bit. It don't, it really only does it in the beginning and at the end. It doesn't really talk about it a lot throughout the middle. The most of that game is you running around. Yeah, most of the game is you running around powers. Seattle and like yeah, doing stuff with cool powers uh, that all get nullified because once you get the second power, you realize it's the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple. Of, yeah, I love that game. That's the only game I've platinumed. But um, anyway, uh, do you got any more Zero Dawn thoughts? Uh, so it looks like we both have played multiplayer games again. Yeah. Um, okay, so Battlefield Five became free on PlayStation Plus. So the way I'll explain this is we, we've talked about this game a bunch. It's cool. 64 people on a map. A lot of fun. Okay, so normally when I load into Conquest, which is their big vehicle base controlling objectives mode, there's usually about five or six lobbies that you can join with a match in it that are full. And after that, it kind of peaks down to like, you'll see 30 people of 64. When I load this up and I was looking at it, there was like 20 to 30 lobby. It's probably more like 20 lobbies, maybe more instead that were all full, which blew my fucking mind. And I'm so ready for like, this is such a smart, like, advertising move for ea to be like hey this battlefield 5 game plays really well but a bunch of people didn't get into it make it free and a bunch of people will play it and maybe they'll pick up battlefield 6 which i'm super excited for i can't wait yeah so that's that's been cool it's like you know where you're playing with a bunch of people it's like you're talking about playing apex on pc where you're matching with a bunch of people who aren't as good at this so you're kind of can swing a little better yeah. But in Battlefield that can hurt me too because if my teammates are a lot fresher, then it's us losing objectives a lot faster and stuff. But it's been cool. I'm learning how to play the medic right now, which I never did a lot of. And they have the thing of like comparing it to like an Apex Legends like submach like a SMG. I'm just spraying people. <laughs> I went into this area you go to the Pacific and they have this like area in the middle between the two sides. Cause there's like a and B on one side and there's D and E on the other, but then there's C in the middle that you're meeting. And I went there and I hosed like seven people down. Normally you're just like getting two kills and dying, but I was just in there. Cause they also have this like healing system where normally everyone else, but the medic has one, health pack they can heal themselves with and it's pretty fast but the medic has unlimited of them so i'm just i'll just healing up and hosing people and running around and sliding and getting behind cover and stuff so it's a cool time titanfall 2 though yeah i will say much cooler game than Battlefield. yeah so like sort of to go to titanfall like they did a pretty similar thing where titanfall 2 had a free weekend on steam uh and i already had titanfall on pc i just need to get it downloaded 
had a bit of a problem with the EA desktop app saying that the files were corrupted, so I just had to relaunch Origin instead, and that worked. Uh, but like, yeah, like over that weekend, I got to like play some Titanfall with like finally people who hadn't been playing this game since launch, right? And got to let's be let's be clear, Titanfall Two has hey, just wall high, running, yeah, like, grappling hooks bunny hop jumps people master this game and are murder machines yeah like this game has like a high skill ceiling on really every aspect of it even like no matter like what class you're playing like your quote class you're playing in this or uh like what titan you use like they all have like really interesting approaches you can take to like maximize your efficiency and the people who still played this game did just that with everything so like you just yeah. imposed even Which is like, like people with stims running around making themselves like you think like yeah. the um, octane is fast. Like look at a Titanfall two character with like a yeah, stim. like because everyone already moves quicker in Titanfall two than they do in Apex, and like you add the stim like sort of medic uh, robot, and they're just rushing across the map. And like not only do they move quicker, but like they're also tougher. Like they're a lot tougher to take down. Um, yeah, yeah, but this was like really cool because like I got to play with like lower experience people again i also got to play like battle like game modes that aren't attrition attrition being like the big team deathmatch where they throw in like enemy uh ads like ai like soldiers that you can take out for points too and it's kind of the only game mode that you can really find easily but like over the weekend i was able to get like last titan standing which is just like everyone on the team spawns in the titan and it just becomes these really interesting um like yeah. small like uh, sort of titan fights where like you're just have this push and pull between like the energy you're expanding and the ammo you're using and whether or not you're getting your ult and then eventually like it ends with like whoever's losing that fight is going to book it and you're just chasing a titan across the map uh, as they look for allies to help them out and it's just this really fun sort of yeah of that you get like last titan standing is my favorite game mode in titanfall 2 really and i cool. love when you knock teams and you just see their pilots running around because you you kill the mech yeah. and they can you, you, can you jump, jump out, out of it and it launches you up and you just see all these pilots running around while you're trying to find the last titan yeah and like as the and like the pilots are also like incredibly like a, a huge danger to you in a titan yeah like i'm i murder i'm a titan murderer that's what i do in multiplayer is i get my charge rifle and i put the mod that makes it charge really fast yeah so i'm just like, like infinite ammo dr -dr 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 yeah you're taking out like whole chunks like pilots can just jump on you and take out your batteries which will take out like a third or like a fourth of your health it's it's so good yeah i th i thoroughly enjoyed titanfall 2 i need to see if my pc will run it but that's cool um all right we're we've been talking about games for a while i think that'll do it titanfall 2 really cool battlefield 5 really cool apex legends really cool all ea games as it turns out ea doing yeah it turns out as it turns out wow respawn and dice really cool studios yeah they just make good shit yeah out. i'm not gonna talk about battlefield hardline here that's okay but uh battlefield 5 and battlefield 1 were pretty good games that people slept on because they weren't modern military but that's whatever that's i, I wouldn't thing. say people slept on battlefield 1 yeah i don't know if that's accurate <laughs> battlefield 1 like uh, definitely yeah. like is like the most excited people are for battlefield in a long time and does like cause like titanfall 2 kind of to fail in a way because titanfall 2 oh, is like yeah. squeezed in between infinite warfare call of duty infinite warfare and battlefield 1 that's yeah that's who launched at the same time that's right yep. that's right it was that set Whatever. from like was it 2016 yeah it's 2016 yeah and then battlefront 2 after that oh we don't talk about battlefront what 2 also ridiculous situation it came back and being okay but when that thing launched oof. all right where can people find you on twitter if also? you need to find me on twitter you can find me at beardless2 twl yeah and if you got some titanfall 2 memes send them to me at uh, travis23doyle on twitter thanks you guys have a good one bye